Examining relationships between two variables. When we have two quantitative variables, we want to know how they are related. We begin by making a scatter plot or an xy axis plot of the ordered pairs. From this scatter plot, we can determine if there may be a linear or a curvilinear relationship. In simple linear regression, we are interested in straight line relationships between two variables. So we are not interested in curves. Weights in pounds and tail lengths in inches for wolves was gathered. This is what the scatter plot looks like. You'll notice the blue dots are the ordered pairs of observations. In these types of graphs, you want to look for general trends. You can see that as we move from left to right in tail lengths, from about 10 inches to about 25 or 26 inches, the weights tend to be going up from around 76 to 78 pounds up to uh, 125 to 130 pounds. Now the pattern we might eyeball for sort of an average or typical relationship would be an increasing linear pattern for this data. So what we're saying is that as tail length increases, weight of wolves is also increasing. Notice there are no unusual values, such as a wolf with a really long tail but a really low weight, or vice versa, a wolf with a really short tail and a really heavy weight. Notice the y variable or the response variable is the one plotted on the vertical axis. In this case that was the weight of wolves. The x variable, which is known as the predictor variable, is plotted on the horizontal axis. In this case, tail length was used as the predictor variable. The predictor will be the known value or the easy to obtain value and the response value will be the one that we would like to estimate if we know the predictor value. This particular scatter plot shows an increasing or a positive linear pattern or relationship between tail length and weight for wolves. In simple linear regression, we're not interested in exact relationships. We recognize variability exists in real world data, and we're interested in these sorts of patterns or data sets. Number of houses sold will vary even when interest rates are exactly the same. People that are the same height are not the same weight. Children who are the same age are not always the same height. And as we just observed, wolves with same tail lengths are going to differ in how much they weigh. The correlation coefficient r is one way to quantify or measure the strength of a linear relationship between your predictor variable x and your response variable y. The way the correlation is calculated, r is always between negative 1 and positive 1. The sine of r, whether it's negative or positive, agrees with the trend in the scatter plot. So if y tends to increase as x increases, then r will be positive. If y tends to decrease as x increases, then r is negative. And when r is near zero, that indicates that x and y neither tend to increase or decrease together. If r is positive 1, the most it can ever be, the points form a perfect line that has an upward trend or a positive slope. If r is negative 1, the smallest it can ever be, the points form a perfect line but with a downward trend or a negative slope. In most cases, r is going to be a decimal number between negative 1 and positive 1. 
the closer it is to positive or negative 1, the more clear a linear pattern is with the points. As R moves away from these extremes, there may still be a linear pattern, but there's also a lot of variability, or the points scatter really far away from the line. Let's look at a few graphs with examples of correlation values. In this case, the scatter plot has a correlation of 1. These four points indicate a perfect straight line. So you could draw one line that goes through all four of these points and notice that it has a positive slope or an increasing trend. In this scatter plot, the correlation coefficient is negative 0 0.997, very close to negative 1, but not quite. So even though from our visual eyesight, these points look like they would fall exactly on a straight line, they don't quite do that. You could not draw one line that would go through all four of these points exactly. In this case, there doesn't seem to be any clear pattern between x and y. We would expect the correlation value to be near zero for this scatter plot. In this case, we can see that as x gets bigger, y tends to also get a little bigger, but the points are not real tight to a line. They scatter far away from a line. As a result, r is 0 0.56. So it's positive, increasing an in, or explaining or describing an increasing trend, but it's not very close to positive 1 because the points exhibit a lot of variability away from a straight line. Suppose for the wolf data, we made a plot of basically where the x bar and y bar for the data is. That sort of creates the vertical and horizontal lines we have drawn in. What would you guess for the value of r? Now the more that you work with data sets, you'll start to notice patterns. In this, in this case, notice that there are several patterns not near either of the edges in the lower left quadrant okay, and the upper right quadrant. There's only one value in the upper left quadrant. There's three values, but two are very close to the y bar line in the bottom right uh, or the lower right quadrant. So the data is really stretched out a lot more from bottom left to upper right. So I would expect an increasing trend. So R would be positive, but the points scatter pretty far from the line. So I would just guess that R is between, I don't know, maybe 0.6 and 0.8. When you actually look at the correlation, it is measured and calculated to be 0 0.692 for this data set. So this is the example of how to calculate and interpret the correlation coefficient for a set of data.